But now it's time to talk to our expert, um, Dr. Bertha Ayi, uh, who is a special disease, uh, disease specialist. And so she'll be speaking to us as well as Dr. Newman, who is a clinical psychologist. Thank you. And it's a pleasure having you on the show one more time. I hope you're both doing well. Yes. Thank you. You're All fine. Right. Dr. Bertha, let me start off with you. And I want to talk about ventilators. Now the conversation is shifting. We're gradually beginning to realize that where we're getting to, we need to use ventilators and we need to gather as many as possible just in case our numbers increase by the day. First of all, please explain to me who gets to be on the, the, the ventilator. Once you catch the virus, does it mean that you automatically have to go on a ventilator or not? Um, no. So about 90, about 80 percent of people who would catch this virus would not need ventilator support. And I don't know if you can see this very well. I'm trying to share my yeah. screen. A bit blare, but if you can spell A it bit, out to us. Yeah. OK, so it, the, the yellow one shows you the people with mild disease. Um, the blue one are people with moderate disease. OK. And then. The severe ones are the purple. So the people in purple, mm -hmm. um, they're more likely to progress to death. And Ooh. mild to moderate would progress to um, recovery. So essentially, about 80% of people who get this infection would report only mild to moderate disease. Mm -hmm. And another 20% will develop severe disease. And of these 20%, five of them will be critical, requiring the use of ventilators. Okay. So it's not everybody who would need ventilators. But what is happening is that, so for example, the fifth patient who died in Ghana, and mm -hmm. I just happen to have personal information, that's why I'm sharing. But okay. he was ill 10 days before, and he was asked to quarantine at, or take care of himself at home. And apparently two days before his death, he sent a message to a friend that he's feeling terrible. And then he died at home. But I know what may have happened was that typically... On day eight, if, for those who would develop pneumonia or mm -hmm. severe infection requiring ventilator support, on day eight, they will start getting short of breath. Mm -hmm. If they come into the hospital, we check something called their pulse oximetry or their oxygenation level. Okay. And those patients will be placed on oxygen. Now, there are two ways in which you can give oxygen to a person, just two broad ways. The first method is called non-invasive. It means you just put oxygen on the person's nostril. Mm -hmm. You can give it by BiPAP, CPAP. There are many methods of doing that. If the non-invasive, in non-invasive means you're not having to put a tube down the person's lungs or trachea to deliver the oxygen. If the non-invasive methods are not enough, then you require intubation okay. or the ventilator support. So is this category of people who require intubation who are then considered critical? Okay. And um, I believe some people just die at home. So a good example would be Andrew, um, Chris Cuomo. Mm -hmm. He comes on CNN every yeah. night. He's, yeah. he's ill, but he, he hasn't developed a pneumonia. Okay. Okay. Now, also in the U.S., I'm realizing that there's a shortage of ventilators to the extent that they've had to ship some from China. Now, there are also issues where people are sharing ventilators. So then they look at how severe your case is or what your underlying condition is. And if it's possible to share a ventilator with someone, you do so. Now, doctors are also having to make that difficult decision of deciding who gets a ventilator and who doesn't. In Ghana, we're hearing that only three people are on ventilators. We have just a little short of 300 ventilators in the country with a recorded number of 287 cases in the country. At this point, should we be focusing more on um, gathering enough ventilators just in case so that we don't end up um, you know, experiencing the shortage that other countries are experiencing? And how important are they at this point? All right, you've asked me about five questions, but I I'll try and answer them. <laughs> so sharing of ventilators. So I happen to be on a, like a WhatsApp group with a few other critical care doctors in Ghana. And so we've discussed this. So there's a way in which you can share ventilators with up to seven people. And so we've considered this. We're looking at how this can be done if, if push gets to show. Mm. But the problem, the only thing is that the ventilators, the reason why you need specialized machines is that their lung has pressures that you don't have to exceed. Okay. Otherwise, you could actually use a ventilator to kill someone if you mm -hmm. don't know how to manage it. So for people to share a ventilator, you must group similar patients together, meaning they'll have the same airway pressure because you're going to use the same monitor. So if the airway pressure is like 7,000 or whatever, and you have seven people, mm -hmm. you have to divide that by seven 
so that you can manage all seven of them at once. But yes, that can be done, and that can be considered in Ghana. Okay. Now, the U.S. is short of ventilators. They have over 150,000 ventilators, mm -hmm. and they also have a stockpile of, I believe, 40,000. But this is not enough. And the reason is that the U.S. is doing what a lot of countries in Africa are doing right now, just sitting and watching and not putting the right brakes on the right places. Mm. If you wait... So the disease picks up momentum. You cannot do anything about it. I mean, it's sad that two days ago the U.S. is saying we're having um, difficulty contro controlling this virus. They yeah. had the chance. Yeah. Now, over the last 24 hours, I woke up in tears. 1,800 people have died overnight in America. Mm. This is the largest number recorded so far. I mean, even when China was at its peak... The maximum cases were, I believe, 800, 1,000, and then it started getting to 500. No country has reported 1,800 deaths in, in one, one day. Yeah. So that yeah. is really sad. And, and I don't think we should be... I mean, it's good we get some ventilators. But the point is, at this time, you see, it takes time to train people to use the ventilator. It's not just getting the machine there. You need the right people to be managing it. Mm. And currently, we don't even have enough of that. And those who we have, they haven't been using it very often. And so they need some training. We have the anesthesiologists or anesthetists who use it, but they would have to be pulled from the operating rooms and the ventilators in the operating rooms have to be adjusted to fit them to be used outside of the operating room. Yeah. Where we need to put our focus right now is that, look, let's just be realistic. We're not going to get 2,000 ventilators overnight. Mm -hmm. Where can we put the pressure? The pressure is enforcing lockdown, doing a nationwide lockdown, and I will not say that, I, can't, I will not stop saying that enough. This is not the point to be debating whether we should have a lockdown or not. It is the point to be saying, look here, there's a fire burning in America. They have lost 2,000 people in one day. Mm -hmm. In the last three days, 4,000 people. Yeah, 4,000 people yeah. have 1,000 yeah. the day before, 1,200, 1,000. 4,000 people have died in this glorious country that has everything. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be debating a lockdown. We need to run and lock our country down. Topping importation was good. But stopping in-house transmission is even better. Now, so far as the black people are concerned, now we've switched from, oh, black genes cannot get the virus to, oh, can black genes, are black genes more susceptible? No. Yeah. What is happening yeah. in America, African Americans, is that in Ghana and in all over the world, blacks have a higher rate of hypertension. Blacks mm. have a higher rate of diabetes. Hmm. Blacks have a higher rate of obesity. You add all these three three things together, and you increase because just diabetes alone increases your risk of acquiring severe disease by thirty percent. Okay. You know, if two people okay. got the same um, coronavirus, the person who has diabetes has a thirty percent chance hmm. of ending up on the ventilator. So since we have a high rate of diabetes, hypertension, obesity, all these factors have come together. And of course, a lot of African Americans in this country have a low income. They live together in close quarters. Yeah. They're not as well to do. So when all these factors come together, transmission is higher and disease is equally higher. Okay. All right. Let, let, let me bring Dr. Newman Arthur in. I, I realized that he kept nodding at the points that you were making. Doctor, now, with that revelation about how Africans and black people are more susceptible to the disease, you are here in the country. You can see exactly what's happening. When you come across these locals, what are some of the things you tell them? Well, I think generally we focus on, on prevention at this time. Like, like she was saying, uh, we, don't, we don't have to let things get out of hand because we don't have uh, uh, enough of what we need to be able to contain the, the disease. Uh, if it gets out of hand. So personally, I do a lot of education, right? And mm. from my point as a psychologist, I rather reassure or reaffirm people's uh, ability to do things and not the fear of the disease. Uh, because I feel that when people feel empowered, uh, they're able to do what they are supposed to do. So what I do generally is, is educate them and also make them know that it is possible for, mm -hmm. for us to deal with this at this time. It is possible. 
Okay. Uh, because uh, thankfully, this is preventable. Thankfully, it is preventable, yeah. Yeah. right? And basically, based on person-to-person -person transmission, it means that if people decide to do the right thing, this they should uh, uh, come under control. Because if you look at all the uh, past uh, infections, these pandemics in the past, you realize that generally within a year, you should see significant drop. Mm -hmm. in, in the spread and uh, impact on nations and all that. So it means that if we do what we have to do well, by the end of this year, we should, we should put a full stop to this. But, but don't you it think, is possible. Not, not to catch you, but don't you think that now realizing that uh, there's 7,461 test results that are available out of the over 15,000 taken, only 14 people have tested positive. It is good news, but at the same time, it could mean that Ghanaians would realize, okay, not too many people have contracted the virus. So maybe let me relax a bit, continue to live my life, because it's very likely that we'll still record lower numbers of infections. What do you say to that? Before I come to Dr. Bertha. Oh, it, is, it, it is actually normal. It, it, it's part of human behavior. Ex for example, if you have exams today, right, and they mm -hmm. say it won't come off today, we, will, we are postponing to, to, uh, in the next three days. <laughs> Obviously, people are going to relax. Oh, I'll see. You know, then a day to exams. Yes. <laughs> people will sleep. So a day to exams, then they panic again. Right? So it, it is a normal response to people's um, to information. Especially when people are stressed, people are afraid, people don't know what to do, and they hear any good news. Yeah. And it's likely to lose their, their fear a bit. But okay. uh, like we said, the continued education and the co like what we are doing this morning, right? Mm -hmm. If if we get a better view of what is going on and people are aware of what is going on, I think I think it's going to maintain a certain good behavior. Okay, doctor, I'll let you touch yes. on on this particular topic, but then there'll be a follow up on something you said earlier, explaining why blacks are more likely to contract the virus. One of the things you said is that they they find themselves living in small unit areas, and so you find maybe five people, six people crammed up in one small space. This is not unique uh, when it comes to Ghana. Oh, well, this, this is very obvious in Ghana. So because we see a lot of people, maybe 7, 10, 11 people sleeping in one room. And we find a lot of situations like these in our most populated areas. And so what differently can we do in order to ensure that as much as we're preaching social distancing and all that, we will not have people in a lockdown as well. We will not have 10 people in one room saying, well, there's a lockdown, we're asked to stay. Because that way the virus will spread faster. Well, before I answer that, let me just make a comment on the only 14. See, mm -hmm. with, with COVID-19, one is more than enough because in South Korea, which reported over, I believe, over 80,000 cases or so, one woman went to one church and caused 1,100 people to get infected. Mm -hmm. And that church alone was responsible to 60 to 70 percent of those cases in South Korea. In New York, the town of New Rochelle had to be put under lockdown because one attorney, just one, within one week, he infected 100 people. So when you pick up 14 out of uh, contact tracing, immediately, the first thing you have to think about was at which point did those people test positive? Mm -hmm. Because every three days, that number would multiply. So let's assume they got infected, um, let's say, even 16 days ago. Or let's make it 15 days. What yeah. it means is that in those 15 days, there's two raised to the power five. Mm -hmm. And whatever that number is, multiply that by 15. It's 4, 8, 16, 32. So multiply 32 by 14. That, so those people have infected about 420 people. Wow. And they, we, we don't even know it. So 14 will depend on when they got infected. They've already started transmitting. So with, with, with COVID-19, don't let a single digit fool you at all. Mm. At all. All you need is one person and you start an epidemic. I so see. let me go back to your question. So it's not as though blacks acquire it more because we don't want to swing from, oh, blacks are immune to suddenly. No, we're talking about the toll of disease. You remember the little graph I showed you about people who would develop severe disease? Mm. It just so happens. And the fact, if you're black and you're healthy, you don't have diabetes, hypertension, you're not obese, you're not likely to get severe disease, although that's not uncommon. Yeah. I've seen several black patients who have mild disease and they've been discharged home. However, the obese person who comes in 
eats a lot, has diabetes, has hypertension, ends up on the ventilator. Mm -hmm. and, and, and even talking about ventilators, just to digress a little bit, what is most frustrating to the thousands of intensive care unit doctors in Italy, America, and China is that, my dear, even in spite of the ventilators, mm -hmm. people are still dying. Yeah. They are still dying. And, and there's a new train of thought that, you know, some people think that the virus actually prevents the little oxygen that gets to the red blood cells from being released. Sort of the, the hemoglobin cannot bind to the oxygen enough. And so people desaturate. So even the oxygen you're giving to the person does not get to the places where it's needed. And so yesterday I was discussing with a friend of mine, yeah. should we be using hyperbaric oxygen chambers? Mm -hmm. These are chambers with a high amount of oxygen. Is that going to be the solution? Should people be using something that can be given that would sort of detach the, the, the um, ineffective hemoglobin from the virus? I mean, we're, we're going to have to think of really, Wait. really mm. um, new methods of dealing with this virus. Hmm. This is scary. Dr. Newman. Now, there's also an issue, again, with security, and I'll come back to that, because a young man, unfortunately, lost his life as a result of a battle that ensued between him and a security man because he was not respecting the lockdown regulations. And in that particular area, I'm sure you know, I'm talking about Sherman, in that particular area, you could see that people were very much agitated, either angry at the security for what's happening, also about the fact that we're under lockdown, you're asking us to stay indoors, but the only home we have is the streets, and that's where we are sleeping. For such people, what really can we do for them? Because unfortunately, we can't provide shelter for all of them at the same time. You know, uh, um, personally, I find it very, very difficult to answer uh, uh, some of these questions because these are actual practical problems that we'd have to deal with. And it's difficult. I think that uh, in our situation, we should keep educating people all those uh, personal uh, hygienic practices that we're, we're talking about, we should keep hammering it. People should keep doing it. At least it's going to reduce, you know, uh, uh, the rate of transmission of, of the virus. But it is a very, very difficult thing. And mm. sincerely, I don't have an answer to that. But, it, it's but, difficult. What, what are you going to tell them? Uh -huh. It's difficult. But how do we restore we should, their trust should... in the security after what has happened? Oh, I, I think that People should now understand why the lockdown is necessary, and we should we should keep we should keep uh, informing them about the impact of whatever is going to happen if they don't follow. Because I think that now people uh, no people have a certain level of understanding, but it has not gone down there to the ordinary people for them to understand why all these things are happening and why all those measures are important. You know, okay. when, when they begin to understand things, because personally from where I sit, I think that with consistent education, if the ordinary person gets to understand, then they are likely to do their best regardless of their current situation. But okay. it will be very, very difficult at this point to, to, to deal with uh, people who, who sleep on it because you may have to provide them with some form of accommodation and that will be difficult. Mm -hmm. Very difficult. Let, let, me, difficult thing. let me go it's on to some questions thing. posed by our viewers for both Dr. Newman and Dr. Beth Ayi. So this one says, Hi Bella, I have a concern about the reported cases in Ghana. Does the media confirm for themselves the cases being reported by the Ghana Health Service? Who has been taxed to verify these figures? Yes, we understand because of stigmatization, their pictures can't be released. But can the media do some verification? Dr. Beth Ayi, I'm coming to you uh, with this particular case. Uh, this particular question, because I remember when one of the Guineans in Tamale escaped, they were asking for her photo, and the security mentioned that for fear of lynching, they would rather not put out her picture. Now, people are worried because if they don't know who contracted the virus and whether they got in touch with the person, how will they protect themselves or probably even ask for a test? So in this case where this person is asking for stigmatization based on pictures and all of that, can we start putting out names? And should the media also verify this um you know these numbers that are put out um well so it's a fine balance on the one hand we shouldn't put we can't i've had a lot of questions people keep asking me why the names are not out there i think that at least the locations should be discussed we don't have to say who has it because it it it, it borders on human rights issues 
Um, but people want to know where pe these people are living. For example, is my next door neighbor having the disease? Because then I can also act, act as a security person. If I see them leaving their house when they're supposed to be in quarantine, mm -hmm. then I, I can enforce it a little bit. I think they should at least share the information on the lo localities that are affected. Okay. Um, they cannot share the names. I mean, I know there are people who want the names to be shared. In fact, a lot more people want the names to be shared than not be shared. But I think we need to put ourselves in the case of um, the, 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 the position of the people who are infected, that we may not want our information out there. And it's not just once, it's forever. Mm. But I think it's an African stigmatization issue. Um, for example, in the U.S., um, if like Boris Johnson, nobody yeah. asked him, the prime minister, he just got on Twitter, mm -hmm. the Iranian, um, deputy, deputy health minister, health minister yeah. he got on Twitter. Tom Hanks got on Twitter. Same with, um, all Idris the other Elba celebrities and everyone else. Yes. Idris Elba. But no, in Africa, it's an issue. We, we, we won't, we don't want to talk about anything that brings attention. I mean, if anybody in the administration gets it, they probably will hide it. Mm -hmm. But but that's that's it. It's wrong. I mean, you, you take something like HIV, where we're supposed to be doing contact tracing. And I hear in Ghana, the policy is that if somebody has HIV, you expect them to contact their previous sexual partners. Mm -hmm. And that, that we don't get involved because they are responsible for, 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 for telling them. I mean, who is going to call their former partners and tell them, hey, I have HIV. That's something that has to be taken over by public health. Okay. But, and that's what happens in a lot of countries. But no, it doesn't happen in Ghana. That, that's what we do. So um, okay. diseases could spread that way. Yes. All right. Well, good morning. I agree with the virologists. People are not respecting the social distance protocol, especially in the villages where there's no lockdown in their respective regions. For example, a pastor in the village where I live still visits members and is exposing them to risk. And again, I come back to you, Doc, because people are calling for a national lockdown. And we were, we were expecting that based on the number of results, uh, positive results that we uh, record from the over 15,000, that is what will inform the president. Now that we're recording only 14 cases out of over 7,000, we're not sure whether there's going to be the possibility of a national lockdown or not. Should we ensure that across the nation? Oh, it's a question for me. So yes. I don't think it should even come up as a debate. You see, we can debate this if we're the first country to have coronavirus. Mm. It's not a debate. Take your computer and start looking at what's happening in America, in Italy, and China. And, you, and I said this in a video. A first fool is not a fool. A second fool is not a fool. But a third fool is a fool. I think the first fool are the Europeans. They didn't think it would get to them. They were flying in and out of China. Mm -hmm. The third fool is America. I'm sorry to say that. They also thought it wouldn't get to them. And we have, um, there's a whole video showing different people saying, what, a few cases, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Americans didn't believe, especially a particular TV channel. I won't mention the name. Mm -hmm. They scoffed at the whole thing. They didn't think it would become an issue. And today, look at us. 2,000 people dead in one day. And you see... Here is the thing, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to speak my mind. I think there's been a global failure of leadership, period. Mm. And you know why? This shouldn't even be Ghana's decision. It shouldn't be Togo's decision. There should be a global body saying that, look, we've studied this disease. We're going to advise you strongly. If you don't, if you don't limit your body, your, the movement in your country, you are going to have this, that, and that. For one example, my dear, yeah. why... Didn't China go on lockdown? By the end of January, every country was having disease from China. Why wasn't China advised? If, if people didn't have the boldness, like right now, to stop um, local or internal, why didn't, wasn't China advised that, look, the WHO would come every day and tell us that, yes, 99% of the cases are from China, 80% yeah. is from Hubei district, so just relax. Why wasn't China shut down? Why did we wait till China exported disease to everybody? And even in the first week of March, my dear, almost a, lo a lot of African countries, their first cases were from we're Italy, in, yeah. South Africa, Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, Morocco, Tunisia, yeah. Switzerland, um, Czechos, all of them were from Italy. And the first week of March, I was thinking, 
who is going to tell Italy to shut down the whole country? So on March 9th, if Italian president had not shut down his own country, there's no international body with the boldness, the guts, the leadership to tell Italy to shut down. Mm. And look at us, we are debating. We shouldn't be debating. We should have somebody, either a global health security or even WHO. Now, WHO claims they can't tell any country to shut down. And I still, I, I believe it's the international health regulations. But I think... I find it irresponsible. Okay. You know, why should we be discussing when we know the obvious? Hmm. All right, let me just run through the comments and then I'll come back to you so we can wrap up. Good morning, Bella. Please, the distribution of face masks is only centered in Accra and Kumasi, neglecting other regions. For instance, if you come to Tamale, about 80% of residents here are not having face masks because most of the local people cannot afford to buy. So please, I will personally assist anyone who's ready to distribute these masks in Tamale. This is from Abdul Baki. Thank you very much. John Neil Ante Vanderpoy says, as part of measures to avoid getting infected with the virus, we're charged to refrain from constantly touching the eye, nose, and mouth. What about the ears? We barely hear that. Can't the virus penetrate the body through the ears? Okay, we'll have the doctor answer that, but let me read the rest of the comments. Good morning, Bella. Please, I want to know when is this free water issue starting? Because it seems people don't understand what the minister said. Those who have the pipe are not allowing people to fetch for free. Announcements should be made in the community so that people will get access to it. Well, yesterday the minister said and she insisted that everyone should allow people to fetch for free. But we'll try and get you answers um, for that. I know it has started, by the way. Let us know which areas are not adhering to these directives by the president so that we can call them out and hopefully they'll adhere to it. Social welfare numbers that they put out for people to come is always busy. I suggest they have a different number for Tema. Uh, so we can call. Hello, Bella. This is Ku Kwame Mensah from Aoshi. It's really sad the youth rather are recording higher cases of COVID-19. Absolutely. Hello, I'm Mohammed from Ashaman. Please, I would like to know, are we not part of the donation of food because we haven't gotten anything yet? There's a number that was put out. I'll put it out there so that you can call and, you know, alert them that you have not received some of the food. Good morning, Bella. I'm watching and I love the show. Keep the fire burning. Thank you. Thanks to TV3. Now, please, which African countries are not affected or infected by the virus? We'll give you those details. Good morning, TV3. Please, Pejet, taxi drivers are using COVID-19 to defraud passengers. Please, before COVID-19, taxes, uh, taxis were taking four passengers at a cost of seven Ghana cities per passenger to haul. Uh, with a total of 28 Ghana cities per trip. But now drivers take three at a cost of 10 Ghana cities per passenger, for which a trip from Peja to Ho is now 30 Ghana cities. So that's a 45% increase from Agbe Peja Ho West. Okay, thank you for alerting us on this. Very true, my sister. As these factories start producing the masks, we should also immediately start public education on the appropriate disposal of these masks. This should include the factories producing them. Otherwise, we may save lives from death of COVID-19, but end up killing people through floods due to choked gutters by waste mask. Um, good morning, Bella. Cars are moving freely because the police refuse to stand at the barriers at Nungwa. So if the authorities are watching, it looks like the barrier at Nungwa is free now final one good morning please with a free water issue we the people at gomwa nyayano are still paying nyayano are still paying for the water we buy the tap owners are few and they claim no one has paid them now that's a new one i'll come to you shortly but let me just get an answer about touching of ears and whether that could be a way of transmitting the virus dr bertha i'm i'm sorry what was your question so someone asked that if you touch it, we're being asked not to touch our eyes, our nose, our lips. But what about the ear? If I touch my ear, could I transmit the virus as well? Well, that's an interesting one. I mean, yeah. I think wherever the virus has settled, if you touch, you can, you can, you can still um, acquire the infection. So the ear doesn't really matter, except these are the um, places we touch the most. And mm. that's why, uh, but if you have a habit of touching your ears, then you have to add that to the list of... Um, no touch areas. Okay. All right. Dr. Newman, please give me your final words before you go. People are watching you. They are still hoping for some more education from you as well. I, th I, think, I think there are three things. Personally, I, I, would, I focus on all the time. One, people should not panic. They should be cautious. This time, if people panic, they may not be able to do the right things. We should be cautious but not panic. Secondly, I think that we should continue the education. We should keep talking about it. We shouldn't talk, and especially in Ghana, 
I think a lot of education should be done in the, in the local languages. Mm. Because almost every TV does the education in, in English. So, for example, I know TV3 is an English, you know, station. But I think some of your, your shows, some of your education should, should be in the local languages. In because God, yes. Yes, see, there, are, there are some people in Ashama who, who don't understand all this English, right? And, yeah. and they are the ones who are who are disobeying the, the, the lockdown you know, uh, laws. So mm -hmm. I think that we should keep educating people. When they understand, it is likely that it is going to influence their behaviors. Then the third thing is that uh, I think that the government at this time should also take you know, firm decisions about lockdowns. If we need to lock down, we have to lock down as soon as possible and not delay. Because it looks like finally we are going to lock down. It looks yeah. like it. Mm. So why, is, why wait till after one week, two weeks, three weeks to record higher cases before, before we take that decision? Yeah. If it has to be done, yeah. then the earlier we do that, the better. All right. Thank you so much. Dr. Newman Arthur is a clinical psychologist. And Dr. Bertha Sewa Ayi is an infectious disease specialist. Thank you so much for your time. And I wish you well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I'll be dropping the numbers where you can call if you need some hot food from the Ministry of Gender and Social Protection. And who knows, maybe I'll switch to some guy and tree and some air just to reach out to all those people as well. It's COVID-19 360. We'll be back.